All right, Gilbert Gottfried is here. He's coming in to do the news with us. Hmm, I wonder if Gilbert is smart or dumb. Oh, I think Gilbert's dumb. <laughs> I think he knows that. <laughs> Joining us for the news now, the always funny, incredibly annoying Gilbert Gottfried. You know, I read on the Internet all the time about who people's favorite guests are. They have this yeah. running discussion of who's favorite guests. And 50% of the people love when Gilbert is here, and 50% of the people hate when Gilbert is here. But there's always a reaction. There are people who turn off their radios as soon as I announce Gilbert is here. <laughs> and I read it sometimes, and I go, well, I think Gilbert's good, but maybe the people are right. Maybe Gilbert sucks. But there's 50% in his favor. Yeah, but there is. There really is. There are 50% of the people who like you. Yeah. So, just so you know that, all right? Amazingly high number for me. Yeah, it is high. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Gilbert, uh, like, like, here it is. It says, uh, Howard, here's a letter, okay? I got this letter, and I saved it for when Gilbert would come in. This is a letter about Gilbert. Howard, the show is great. Never miss it. Maybe once in a while. That once in a while is when Gilbert comes on. <laughs> I just need to vent about him. It's about the amount of time you give him and when he comes on. During the news, the best part of the show. Yes. I know you guys are loyal to your friends and Gilbert needs his plugs, but so much time given to him is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine he's an okay guy, but he's a mediocre comic, oh. a poor ad-libber, and when he does say something humorous, he does it over and over ad nauseum. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound like me. He compounds his weak performances by stepping all over Robin's lines. Why can't he just come on, mid-show, do his plugs and leave? After a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. Like, like, uh, <laughs> Try to be funny. <laughs> right. Don't even, you know, let him just get his plugs in. Uh, other comics know how to deal with the news. Gilbert ruins it. I just want to turn him off. I know it doesn't matter, but each time I hear him on Best Of or Live, I feel compelled to let you know. Keep up the great work. Your show is brilliant in a sophomoric kind of way. And that's from Steve. And that's what he said. So, can I say my plugs and leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you don't mind. You know, we're thinking of trying that. But I think you're funny. Yeah. Look, Fred left the room already. <laughs> Look at that. Fred can't even stand it when Gilbert's he in He works here. here and he left. And he left. Yeah. But you, you understand, there's a constant debate yes. on the Internet, even. I read the Internet. Do you have, you have the computers? But I think it's a good thing, because no? we could have... There are guests that nobody discusses, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. But at least Gilbert generates discussion. And, Gil and they, they say, name your top five guests and your worst five guests. And Gilbert's either top five or the worst five. He's he always it on mentioned. both lists. Yeah, I'm the king on both. of both lists. <laughs> One guy I saw had him on both lists. I hate him and I love him. But you know what? You annoy people, right? Oh, yes. <clears throat> do you do that intentionally or is that just something that happens? Do you know you're annoying people when you do it? Do you know you're an annoying guy? I don't think about it anymore. You know? Yeah. But were you, were you uh, aiming for that when you started? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, is that your desire to anger people? Yeah, no, I just seem to achieve it. No, but when you, when you, well, what age did you decide you wanted to be a comic? Were you oh, a young Jesus. boy? Yeah, yeah. You were? Yeah. And and uh, were you like seven? Uh, I was, yeah, I was in like preteen, teen. Really? And you yeah. knew I want to be a stand-up yeah. comic? Uh, who had you seen that made you want to become a... Uh, seriously, I mean, like, what made you come Maybe to this revelation? Have you ever thought that through, like, like why I want to be a comic? I don't know. People still ask me that, and I have no idea. But really? who were your yeah. favorites? I mean, did you watch comedians? Were you, like, a Richard Pryor fan or something? That, that's, that's like, the hip answer. Yeah, but it's not. It's yeah. not even that. Everybody says that, the, oh, Richard Pryor got me into comedy. But it probably wasn't. It was probably you went to, like, the borscht belt with your parents and sort of yeah. Smacky Momstein, and you said, wow, that guy's really good, and I'd like to be doing that, right? Yeah, Alan and Rossi. Right. I was it Alan and Rossi? Was, your influence? was there an, ad, an actual influence? No. There wasn't. I don't, I don't remember, like, one. <laughs> yeah. But don't you think it's, like, did your parents remember you saying, hey, I, uh, Gilbert always run around saying I want to be a comic? Or did you perform for the family at every <laughs> yeah. family gathering? Yeah, I can't picture you yeah. being that kind of kid wanting to perform. I yeah, picture no. you shy and, yeah. you know, a recluse. Yeah, it's like, I like when people interview me and they say, were you the class clown? Right, you like, were. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not getting paid. Yeah. When was Gilbert ever funny when he's not Where getting paid? Where did you grow up <laughs> Yeah. In, in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Oh, did you really? You know, and in all that time, not one person has ever called us and said they went to school with Gilbert. Yeah, nobody went to school. No one remembers them. <laughs> But you never like you never were the class clown. If yeah. anything, you were the guy who got beat up and stuff, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I mean, you weren't popular. You were the class clown. You could see me getting bag. beaten up now. Yeah. Did you yeah. have any friends or anything? Yeah, very few. Yeah, with like guys yeah. you played cards. Did you play yeah. cards on Friday night and stuff like that? <laughs> did you hang with the intellectual? <laughs> I don't even think I was that hip. Really? To play cards. Yeah. I mean, what would you? I mean, you make me feel normal. Like I. Yeah. Do you wear a pocket protector, Gilbert? No, oh, no, I don't see Gilbert like that. But I mean, like, like he had a couple of nerd friends. Yeah. Like we were in the nerd group. <laughs> you like a nerd? 
<laughs> were you good in school? Did you get good grades? Oh, terrible in school. Oh, really? Yeah. I can picture that. So you were bad in terrible school? Terrible in school. Like, did you almost flunk and like, get C's? Oh, yeah. You just got like C's? And... Yeah. Did yeah. your parents have to come to conferences? Yeah. And oh, yeah. When, when I passed, it would just be like like A C. Yeah. Barely. Or a D yeah. plus. Yeah. yeah. Like, we don't have room for them again. <laughs> that was so, like me. Yeah. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> no grades, no broads, no friends. <laughs> you know, the class is already <laughs> overcrowded. So, so on Saturday so night, right. you would talk to the TV. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but would you ever like go out on a Saturday night? Would you go anywhere? Very rarely. Really? Yeah. Would you hang out at like King's television. Highway? Oh, oh yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get beat up. No, but is that where you hung out in Brooklyn, like King's Highway? Uh not that much. I used to go there every now and then. Right. That was Still goes there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm planning a trip there when I have time off. But did you did you not wear the cool clothes or anything? He you doesn't wear them now. Uh, yeah. He wore spandex. I thought maybe there was a time. As, as opposed to now. <laughs> How much anger is packed into that little body of yours? <laughs> you got it in for everybody. So like um like you never had long hair or anything, right? Oh yes. You did? Yes, I did. Really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you I'll, tried I'll to fit to, in? I'll have to come in with a picture of me. I had long oh, hair. Oh, I love to see that. Oh, I had like hair to my shoulders. And yeah. did people find yeah. you annoying? Were you like annoying and everything? Or or you just like were quiet about it? I guess I was quiet about it. And how old were you the first time you ever got on a stage? Like like in high school or something? Oh, uh, yeah. And I you went like, you went to like a comedy club and stood yeah, up? Yeah, I was wow. about 16. And you wrote all your own material? Yeah. Like you didn't try to do like, uh, you know, red do. buttons and jokes, <laughs> is that right? Ho, oh, ho. Oh. <laughs> hey, for the e-show, maybe Scott Einzinger could just draw, draw in long hair on Gilbert. Yeah, but you wouldn't, like, what would you do? Like, when you got on stage the first time, did you bomb? Uh, it, it's funny. It's like, and I hear other comics talk about that. It's like, you're so stupid when you get up on stage. You know, you don't realize right. if you're bombing. So you got up there, and what yeah. did you do? Do you remember what you did? I... Did you tell a joke? Yeah. Did you do the eyes closed thing, or did you... Uh, no, I, I remember telling doing a lot of impressions. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. All right. Had you ever done impressions for anyone else? Oh, uh, yeah. 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 And like they thought they were good to say you yeah. were going <laughs> like, did you do like what, black jokes and stuff? <laughs> like, hello there. Hello, this is an impression of uh, Richard Pryor. Like, <laughs> like who is was, who was the impression that you did? Like David Brenner and stuff? Oh, no, I don't. I, was it yeah, John I, Wayne and all those stupid things? Oh, a lot of stupid ones. <laughs> like what? Yeah. Like what was the stupidest one you oh, did? Oh, God, let's see. <laughs> I used to do it, uh, actually, and now I can't do it because people would say, number one, not that many people know who he is. Right. And two, everyone thinks, oh, you're doing Martin Short. And I used to do a David Steinberg imitation. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. that's different. Because yeah. yeah. Gilbert always does Bobby. different impressions. Yeah. <laughs> How does that go? Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember what I used to say on stage, but I remember, like, with David Brenner, you used David Steinberg. Oh, David, yeah, David Steinberg. Repute the allegations that the literature of the Middle Ages was moribund. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and and people would laugh. Oh yeah, back yeah. then. Yeah. When, when yeah, now Steinberg it's kind of used to come on TV. Yeah, very few people remember him. I I'm remember. Not him. What? What? I'm not laughing. You're not laughing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what were some of your other big impressions? <laughs> oh, I, I, the funny thing is, people used to criticize me when I would do. Um, well, this is when I worked with him for a while. When I, when I would do uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, really? Because they would say, you know, what are you screwing around on stage with people that nobody knows? Yeah, right, right. Yeah. But that's funny. Yeah, and I used to like just like doing him because nobody knew him. Right. So, like, you'd be on a, the same bill as Jerry Seinfeld, one of these small clubs, and, yeah. and would Jerry go first? <laughs> So, sometimes I'd go first. Oh, so they and really didn't know. Yeah, yeah. So you would go out and just go do Jerry yeah. Seinfeld and yeah. nobody know who he was. <laughs> hey, what? Oh, you what? did Jerry at working dirty, right? Oh, yeah. 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 That was your bit. Yeah. What if Jerry Seinfeld was dirty? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People are going, who's Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah. You know what? I've heard you do some of that, and it's real funny, but we can't even do it on the air. Yeah. I know. Nothing funny. I do it's funny. <laughs> yeah, I know. Everything he does. <laughs> But, so, at what point did you realize, like, Gilbert now, you know, his persona on the air is that he can't get girls, but I've seen Gilbert, he can get girls, because he's he? famous. Yeah, he does. He gets, well, and they're good looking. Well, guy can get girls, yeah. but does Gilbert take them up on it? Woody Allen can get girls, all right? <laughs> and what, and Gilbert's saying, a, what does Gilbert do? Does he take a girl home? <laughs> Chris Gilbert, Reeves could get girls. Gilbert, yeah. you want to know the inside scoop on Gilbert? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Gilbert, um, Gilbert is a guy who has trouble with intimacy. He probably had a really screwed up childhood, in all seriousness. And whenever he's around women, 
He's really jerky. Yeah. He is. Like, like I, I mean, told is you. is there ever a moment where he gets comfortable? He was, no. Oh. He was in a club <laughs> with, uh, like, Playboy Playmates, and it was, like, this big deal. And the Playboy Playmates were even kind of excited to see Gilbert, because he was, like, yeah. one of the few famous guys there. And Gilbert just goes up to this one girl who was really cute, and he liked her, and he started grabbing her bra, like, okay. in the back. He's like a seven, a se you know, a ninth grader yeah. or something. Yeah, and he started pulling her bra straps and crap, and, like, she got all pissed off, and she called over a bouncer, and the bouncer threw Gilbert in a closet in the <laughs> middle of the club with everyone watching and locked him in the closet for over a half hour. In a club. I mean, and Gilbert's a star. <laughs> right. I, I mean, it was, like, it was embarrassing because the door was locked, and Gilbert's pounding on the door oh, trying to get no. out. I mean, you know, it's just... Right? There was this black security guard there that was about, I swear, the guy was like six, seven. He was huge. And I remember Gilbert was just annoying this girl to death. She was wearing a, you know, one of those things where you could really see her breast. Yeah. And Gilbert was standing there and had his arms up. And the bouncer picked Gilbert up by the bottom of his elbows. Right. And carried him out to the front. Yeah. <laughs> Here's and it with didn't it. stop me. It didn't. Hey, you're on the air. This is John. Hey, John. Hey, Howard. How are you? All right. Listen, I just want to say, Gilbert has got to be the horniest, scariest <laughs> guy that, that I've ever seen. Why do you say that? Make your point. Well, Gil, I was watching Beach MTV when Jenny McCarthy was on there. Right. And so they bring Gilbert out. <laughs> and so everybody's clapping. Yeah. And she goes to hug him, you know, because they hug each other. And it's like that whole star thing. And the guy's, like, groping her. Like, he's getting a little... <laughs> No, I don't have any problem with that. No, but you, you got to see him, and he's I, doing, and he's doing. His is he pushing his pelvis? Thing. He's pushing his pelvis into uh, her butt. I, I lifted her oh, up by the ass. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Nuts. I mean, you could definitely. She must have been scared. Hey, he's no fag. Come on, Howard. Good class. All right, thank you. <laughs> There's nothing cool Clapping about Gilbert. <laughs> The more they're clapping, the hornier he's getting. <laughs> yeah. you know? Isn't it great? You I, can't do that in real life, but with an audience, you can do whatever exactly. you want. Yeah, it's great. I wish people would follow me around. Well, maybe they really like me. Meanwhile, they're all thinking he's a, a freaking wacko. I think it's normal. <laughs> Anyway, um, want to do some news. Gilbert, oh, Gilbert, what are you promoting? Obviously, you're here for... Ah, yeah. I got like... Well, the, the main thing, uh, the Riviera. Oh, you're going to this, this Saturday. All right. Gilbert will be in Las Vegas. Is that Las Vegas? Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the Riviera this Saturday. Yeah, with Bob Goldthwaite, uh, two shows, 8 and 11. Don't yes. say Bob Goldthwaite. Yes, Bob oh. Goldthwaite, why? Yeah. He comes on this show, uh -oh. right? Uh -oh. and, no, seriously, I'll never forget this guy out. He comes on the show, he's fine, you know, he's, we, we do a good thing together, we do a whole thing. Then he goes on HBO and just bad mouths me. Hmm. And then, like, he just bad mouths me, like, like I did something wrong to this guy. I, in fact, he makes it out that you're upset with him. Yeah, and then he goes around bad mouthing me, saying, I'm upset. I mean, he's a whack job. Have you rapped to him at all off, uh, you know? Not not about you, so I don't know. I'll have he to ask him. He did this whole thing on his HBO special, how I asked him about Kurt Cobain and like. Howard I Howard got pissed at me because I wasn't going to do you know go into it with him. Yeah, and it's like about dude, my friend. What a dope! I mean, I'm just trying to make the guy interesting. You know what I mean? I'm trying to do an interview that will get people excited about Bob Goldthwait. Doesn't he get it? He thinks I give a rat's ass about him and Kurt Cobain. Yeah. I mean, get with it. I'm doing it. I, if I was off the air, I wouldn't even ask about Kurt yeah. Cobain. I could care less about Kurt Cobain. We're on the radio. I got to do something with you. I didn't know who Kurt Cobain was till he killed himself. Yeah, there yeah. you go. It was a career move. Why don't you tell Bob Goldthwait you don't even know who Kurt Cobain yeah. was, all right? <laughs> uh, Bob Goldthwait, people still go see him? I guess. Really? Yeah. Well, you're, I guess you're going to have to carry that show on your shoulders. <laughs> Who's the headliner? You are, right? I, I think it's a co-headlining. But who goes on first? I don't even know. You don't care? Yeah. Nah. Just, <laughs> just yeah. happy to get paid. Yeah. You whatever they tell you. Give me you. my money and let me get out. So if Bob wants to go on last, you don't care? Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you hate going on stage at this point? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, <laughs> like, I like when it's co-headlining or there's somebody, like, at least equal to me so I can go on first and get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you wish that, like, you could just have a movie career or something, yeah. right, else, <laughs> other than this. Because the bottom line is, I mean, it might have been, it was never even fun going yeah. to stand up, yeah. was it? It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the only way you know how to make a living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. You're stuck. Because remember when Gilbert almost died from his appendix attack? Yes. He was like, I don't know. I want to I want to find something else. What does it all mean? What does it all mean? I'm going to help starving children. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, he, then, of course, two weeks later, he was back out on the road. Yeah. Two weeks later, starving children. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's take a. You want to take a break and start the news, or you sure. want to just start it here? We can. Well, I could start it here. No, no let's start it here. All right, because the one thing I want to talk about here before we do a break is that they have done a study. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. 
<laughs> and it turns out people aren't washing their hands after they go to the bathroom. Wow, I know. <gasps> I do. I am. Um, I am really into washing my hands after I go to bed. But Jackie and they didn't oh, ask yeah. people. Even they stood there and watched. They had people standing in the restrooms, Jackie, watching people. Jackie will make oh, a, a, oh. a bowel movement. Oh, jeez. In, in the bathroom, oh. and I'll watch him. He'll just walk out. I gotta just... think about this when he shakes my hand. Yeah, and then when oh. I ca- and then when I caught him doing it, he goes, "Hey, you were talking to me, and you know, <laughs> God, and he, oh, he got distracted." But, but I'm not the only one who's seen him do this. <laughs> <laughs> but Jackie, he swears me, he washes them in the toilet bowl so he doesn't have to wash them at the sink. <laughs> so what, you're starstruck and you forgot to wash your hands? <laughs> I don't even, you know, I can handle it when a guy's peeing because somehow I think urine might be clean or something. I don't know. Like maybe it's, a, isn't it sulfuric acid or something? Less chance of contamination. Yeah. Yeah. Less chance of something sticking to okay. your fingers. Yeah, I mean, I wash it after everything, but, but a bowel movement, there's like... And Jackie's like, hey, I eat healthy. <laughs> oh, so if there's carrots in it, it's okay. Oh, Jackie, you're healthy. You wash Gilbert? I bet you Gilbert doesn't wash. He's over there laughing at Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Gilbert's like, well, I hardly touch any other human being, so I'm only yeah. eating my own food. Yeah. <laughs> Just 60% of those using the restroom at Penn Station washed up afterward. Your ba- Do you check to see what's in the bowl after you go? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's part of the whole pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hey, look what I just did. Yeah, analyzing it all. Right. I love to look. Yeah. Women, oh, yeah. Women, <laughs> women are cleaner than men. <laughs> I think that's, that's part of the whole enjoyment. Do you, ever, do you ever play that game like, what does it look like? Oh, no. <laughs> like maybe you made a sculpture? <laughs> These are not clouds. <laughs> yeah. It's like a Rorschach. I see a bat. I see a brown Taj Mahal. You don't invite anybody in. Do you? No. You ever think about it for a few hours afterwards, how good, if it's a really good one? Like the consistency? How, yeah. And how empty your stomach feels. And yeah. Robin that. says that good consistency is loose. Not like it necessarily loose, That's but crazy. it floats. Hmm. It floats? <laughs> You're not you having a problem. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'm dying. <laughs> huh? I'm healthy. <laughs> oh, I think that was oh, a boy, that feel good. <laughs> and now you were saying you always go to the bathroom when you have to fart. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah I would go to the bathroom to do that. Even yeah. if you're at home? <laughs> <laughs> like if you're just in the no, living room. No, not at home. When there are oh. people, I think Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was an obsession. If I had to go to the bathroom every time I farted, I'd be in the bathroom all day. <laughs> go ahead, Robin. Anyway. Women are cleaner than men. Thank God. They found that 74% of women wash their hands after using the toilet compared to just 61% of men. Oh, please. <laughs> What's with guys? Oh, guys are disgusting. Yeah. And people insist on shaking my hand. I hate it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yesterday I shook a guy's hand that was so wet. You know, he was sa- he was sweating, but oh, I find that hideous. Oh, well, Gilbert probably yeah. sweats on yeah. his <laughs> <laughs> I think about it. They say the most slovenly men uh, were at a baseball game. <laughs> Just 46% of the guys stopped to watch compared to 89% of the female ball fans. So. Oh, I know. When I'm in like a, a ballpark or something and I wash my hand, I don't even want to touch the sink. I know. You don't want to touch the, the faucet. So maybe that's I, why they're not washing. I like when they put like a piece of soap there. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah. What's, what's, that? what's yeah. that about? At a stadium. Yeah. And it's all black. Yeah. Yeah. What is that all about? <laughs> Who are these people? Yeah. Why do they wash their hands with this? Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. don't they realize that they're uh-huh. dirty? <laughs> <laughs> don't they? <laughs> oh. Dirty hands are an extremely common means of spreading diseases ranging from cold to illnesses that cause diarrhea and other intestinal problems. The soap I like is Irish Spring. <laughs> what is that? Did you ever look at your bowel movements afterwards? <laughs> And what kind of shapes are those? <laughs> <laughs> they say there's a gun, but I don't see it. <laughs> this is a very interesting statistic. Well, I don't think Howard. that looks like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this. For some reason, college graduates were slightly <laughs> less likely than were less educated people to wash up. How educated can you be? If you can, wipe your ass. <laughs> hey, Shoshana, I made a good pile. I'm healthy. <laughs> Hey, Shoshana, take a look at this. <laughs> Does that look like Abe Lincoln? <laughs> oh, Shoshana, I'm sorry. You don't know who Abe Lincoln is. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, does that one look like Barney? <laughs> hey, this is... Yeah, How did this conversation <laughs> thing <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld doing a routine <laughs> on corn. Duty. Hey, Shoshana, that one looks like in the shape of an S. <laughs> All right, one too many. All right, let's take a break, Robin. That's a fascinating... That's what the people on the Internet are talking yes. about. That's the lead story. We're going to uh, take a, ba a break, and... Uh, and then I guess we'll come back and have to talk to Gilbert yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> Unless he leaves. Hey, uh, Gilbert will be at the oh Riviera my. Hotel in Las Vegas. Go see him. He's great. Maybe he'll go. He got his plug. <laughs> yeah, and he's going on first so you don't have to wait through Bob Goldthwait. All right. Thank you. Mm, let's return to the Howard Stern Show. All right. Let's do that. We're here with Gilbert Godfrey who will be at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas. And I'm on the new Aladdin video. Oh, big Aladdin, deal. yeah, okay. That's a cartoon. Yeah. I'm going to be bragging about that. Yeah, and I'll be at Caroline's on the 17th of next month. Was that right? Yeah. Oh, great. What month is that? October? October. Right. And what? you'll be this Saturday at the Riviera. The Riviera. Two shows. Here. Dear Howard, Gilbert is a genius. <laughs> See, no. <laughs> Where did he get that? Robin Hanson. <laughs> Are those surprised? negative Gilbert? No, they're positive Gilbert fans. Yeah, okay. I, I might show them to him to make him yes. know that there are people out there who love him. Gilbert and I were talking about how, like, after Gilbert like gets these interviews sometimes and people say, who are your influences, you know, when you were young? And, and he says, he's right. He says the cool answer would be Richard Pryor. Everybody like says that. Every yeah. guitar player I ever talked to, you say, who are your influences? They go, um, Paige, Clapton, Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen. It's always those three guys. Mm, yeah, it's like a stock answer. Ozzy. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, those are my influences. Right. Ozzy. You know, they, they always have some cool answer. I said, yeah, the other cool guy to say is Lenny Bruce. But Gilbert and I were just talking about how boring, because we've gone back and listened to the tapes of Lenny Bruce. It's really dull. Like dig, man. Yeah, it's like dig. You with some chicken, mm, you know, yeah. drinking vodka. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and, you know. What's with the Jews? Like, let me look at the transcript. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my lawyer. Yeah, so, like, dig this, okay? So, you see a Negro who, like, the Schwarzes... It's like everybody's like, wow. Wow. You know, but the Schwarzes know that the Jews call him Negro. And, you know, <laughs> it's like, I don't know what the guy's talking about. But it's a hip answer to say Lenny Bruce. But I don't think any of those comics really do listen to Lenny Bruce. It's like they were probably influenced by Rich Little or something. Right, like something dumb. Yeah, yeah. Something you don't want to admit. Yeah, I thought Rich Little was cool. Yeah. I thought Don Rickles was fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, who was the guy who played the uh, Riddler, Frank Gorshin? Yeah, oh, Frank, Frank Gorshin. Gorshin. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. He was a major influence. I, I enjoyed when he was on, uh, on uh, Ed Sullivan, London Lee. <laughs> <laughs> like Dig, London yeah. Lee. We ran it. I, I met Scores the other night. Jackie, I mean, I was high as a kite. Uh -huh. You know, I'd been drinking. <laughs> Jackie goes, Hey, guess who's in the other room? Oh, God. London <laughs> Lee. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. So I go, and I'm really high as a kite, and I go, Jackie, yeah. So he goes, Want to bring him up here? I go, Jackie, I got girls dancing for me. I don't want to see yeah. London, London, London Lee. Lee. I used to imitate London Lee on stage. I figured as much. Yeah. So I said, I said, I said, Hi, I said Danny's rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I said to Jackie, I said, Jackie, he goes, Wait, 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 Howard, come in the next room, say hi to London. Ouch. And I'm like, Jackie, he goes, come on, we'll go find him. <laughs> I go, I go, I'm having such a nice night here, I'm mellowed out. You have a pair of breasts in your face, and you want to talk yeah, to London, London Lee. Lee. I don't understand yeah. what you you're know talking about. You know who his best about. friend is? Who? Lonnie. I don't care. <laughs> Who cares? Jackie thinks I care. It's still well, like changes no everything. Oh, oh, please. We had a great time. We went out to see him. Me and Ratso and Fred. Oh, we went out to see him. <laughs> Ratso. That's another guy. I want, to be, I want to be around London Lee and Ratso. London Lee's big thing used to be that he, he was rich, that he came from rich parents. Yeah. Great. That was his big joke. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He was my That uncle. was the whole act. I used to love London Lee. I used to watch him on Ed Sullivan. I loved him. Yeah. I thought he was a great comic. I remember one joke he had. What was it? Because, uh, oh, it was, uh, yeah, I, I said to my dad, I want to play with blo oh, oh, my dad gave me blocks to play with on my birthday. Madison Avenue, Lexington. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I got me a German Shepherd for Christmas. Oh, yeah? A dog, a real German Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's that guy doing now, Jackie? Sitting at scores. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I'm sure he's still working clubs and stuff. Oh, is he? I think so. You went and talked to him and you don't know what he's doing? I was afraid to ask. He doesn't him. know what he's doing. <laughs> the poor little rich kid. Yeah, I remember. Mm. He that had on a thing. jet black Mo 
toupee or else oh, he yes. had, had dyed there. Jet black. That's his hair? Uh, Did you go out and see him? That's his oh, hair? Yeah. No, it's not his hair. No, that's... Oh, and he used to look well, like, like, him a, the, you know. like a shower cap. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a black mo wig, and he's yeah. so tan that his skin is going bizarre. Oh, oh, really? like that, that Even when you black. didn't know about toupees, you knew this was a wig. <laughs> yeah. I was a kid, but I didn't know yeah. about this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So Jackie was like really carrying on that this London Lee was here. You gotta see, you gotta see. <laughs> And I was way, I was like sleeping on the couch. That's how wasted I was. Uh -huh. And I was like, hey man, I'm sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and don't bring him up here. I think you thought you were having a nightmare. All of a sudden you heard London Lee. <laughs> and I had no energy to go visit London Lee, what? let alone have a conversation. That could certainly kill your erection. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why? I've been waiting all night to get to the girls, and now I finally got some around me, and now I'm looking at London Lee. <laughs> don't wake me up unless the lawn comes into the room. Marlon is a psycho. I'm convinced of that. Uh, you might be right, but right. it's <laughs> All right, let's get back here. to let's go back to the news. You know, I do want to discuss this whole Ellen DeGeneres thing. Yeah. <laughs> She's so London late. There's a big discussion going on now in the press, and I suppose this is floating it to see how it plays. Right, so it's floating the public. it. Public. So it must be healthy. <laughs> yes. Right. That uh, she wants to come out as being lesbian or deal with this uh, situation on her situation comedy. Well, she's more masculine than London Lee, so... <laughs> I think she should be... Le she's a real lesbian, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody knows. Has she's come out and said she's lesbian? I don't know. That's no, what I see just... other people saying. Oh, they wonder if she's willing to address her own questionable sexuality. She just sexuality. likes to dress in men's clothes. That's all. <laughs> well, look, I don't know if she's a lesbian or not. I assume that she is. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh... I think you can't assume anything. I don't uh, care what she dresses as or is a lesbian. I think what's going on is the show is not really doing that great. And they're looking for a controversy? They're looking... But can you imagine a situation comedy based on a lesbian that runs every week in primetime television in no, America? because no. first of all, she works for the Disney Corporation. As Gilbert knows, he works for Disney, does the Aladdin cartoon. They're comfortable with cartoons. <laughs> and as soon as something gets a little controversial, I worked for Roy Disney for about three weeks, and he, uh -huh. and he went country and told me to shut my mouth. <laughs> as soon as something gets controversial... Uh, they can't handle it. Now, Disney owns ABC as well. Right. They own the network. These religious nuts who make up about 3% of the country. And right away they're making their voices heard. There, were already, there was a woman on entertainment last night. I find it disgraceful. And I will not allow it. I will write every sponsor. And I'm like, what are you afraid of? I mean, who cares? If Ellen is with bestiality, I couldn't care less. <laughs> be a lesbian. I think it would be wonderful. Let her be a lesbian. And God bless her. As far as sponsors go, I would I would boycott sponsors who would pull off the show because she was a lesbian. Well, now yes. the sponsors are saying we're taking a wait and see attitude. I see. Well, I will tell you this: I would like a lesbian in there. I think it's more honest. I can't stomach watching the show now with her with a different Trying guy. To pretend that she's into guys. She can't get a date because she's dry as a desert. <laughs> Baby, what guy? Your guy, guy figured it out on the first date. <laughs> Put your hand there, and there's nothing happening. It's like cement. So I find it, I would find her at least intellectually honest, and I could buy her more in that role. Like now, I can't even watch a Rock Hudson movie because I know he was oh, yeah. gay. Now yeah. I know he's gay. They should have had him with guys. <laughs> I would have done seeing that. That would have stood the test of time. That, that's why I love when gay groups say, "Why don't these actors come out and admit?" Right. It's like it because would wreck the whole. Really it would wreck a career. career. It would correct a career. So uh, Ellen DeGeneres should uh, not be afraid. DeGeneres, rather, would not be afraid to be in a lesbian situation. She shouldn't be, if that's what she is. That's okay with me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, crack it, Bob. All right, what else, Well, Rob? you know, I just, I question this because I don't uh, know whether they could actually uh, continue to call this a sitcom. You see, in Melrose Place, they have a gay character. The gay character's miserable. I saw in some newspaper article they said, forget about being a lesbian. They should have her grow a penis and name it Alan instead of Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Strap on a dildo. They could get, be fun again. I don't know that she they... She wants uh, to team up with a girl and be generous. Uh, right. yes. But, you know, it's I don't know. It's a pun. It's know. cute. It's kind of like a Nichols and Mayberry Gilbert, I'm ignoring you because that was so unfunny. It's witty. <laughs> it's witty. It doesn't make you laugh. <laughs> Something you have to think about. Nude. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Nude? <laughs> Nude? <laughs> Nude? <laughs> they have a bill in Congress that they're considering that says it would they would um, ban gun sales to men who had been convicted of domestic violence. 
Well, how are you going to shoot your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather shoot her than, than knife her? Now you got to smack her over the head with a bottle. <laughs> right. It's yeah. going to be more painful. <laughs> Has been fighting passage of that measure. Of course, they fight everything. They don't want. That's ridiculous. They do not want the right to bear arms uh, violated violated in any way. But if a guy has already slapped his wife around, what do you want to give him a gun? Just because a guy smacks his wife around, doesn't mean he's going to shoot her. (laughs) All right. Let me answer that. Remember the guy Jack Gordon who was on a show? Remember yeah. he hit Latoya over yeah. the head with a chair? But well, he had reasons to. the allegation. Should they stop selling chairs to him? <laughs> <laughs> I risk my case. Man needs a gun. So. They should sell him a couch. Chair? You take away a guy's gun, and gonna make him angrier at his wife. <laughs> That's a penis extension. <laughs> Well, tell them a whole living room set. Right. New Gingrich says they are probably going to act on the measure because they've been getting a lot of adverse publicity as a result of that stand against uh, men who have uh, been involved in domestic violence. The next thing you know... Being allowed to still purchase guns. Most women who are killed by their husbands are killed with guns. Yeah. Yeah. And, Go the, and then the next thing you know <laughs> is the next thing you, guys who yelled at their wives <laughs> are not going to be able to get guns. Then it's going to be... Guys who, uh, I don't know, over uh, the age of uh, so-and-so. No, 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 no. Either you can have guns or you can talking about guys who are out of control and use violence. Now they're to saying solve that. a problem. Every guy who has a gun is out of control. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? As opposed to mild-mannered guys who carry Yeah. Guns. Like, you, you yeah. know, the, the, the postal worker who doesn't beat up oh, anybody. Yes. <laughs> finds a water tower and kills people. <laughs> <laughs> If they yell at their wives, cut out their vocal cords. Don't take away their guns. Well, I just wanted to get your views on that. Well, now you know. (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, here in New York, a crazed cocaine dealer waited patiently until cops called off their 24-hour protection of his pregnant teen girlfriend, then shot her to death yesterday during a bloody siege that left three other people wounded. (laughs) That serves you right, Shoshana. (laughs) Let that be a lesson to you. (laughs) The rampage ended only when the gunman, James Parker, killed himself. He held ten people hostage during his rampage and kept cops at bay for two hours. At one point while he was on the phone with a negotiator, his 17-year-old pregnant girlfriend did scream (laughs) into the phone. I'm talking to Paul Reiser. Would you be quiet? (laughs) Dad, get in here quick. He's Jay going. Leno's coming over. Shut up, Shoshana. <laughs> you better get in here quick. He's going to kill everybody. I'm going to kick your ass, Shoshana. Be who, quiet. Who are these people? <laughs> who kill people? Oh. Why don't they just take their anger and go into a comedy club and work out for 15 minutes? <laughs> Why when, can't you have a gun and shoot your girlfriend? <laughs> when police finally entered the apartment, they found Parker lying next to his dead girlfriend. She was shot in the head execution style. Wow, guys are so angry. <laughs> <laughs> guys get so pissed off. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with that Gilbert? You're fat. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, O.J. Simpson trial part two gets underway today. And they're saying that his new judge, Superior Court Judge Hiroshi Fujisaki, is the anti-Ito. Right. He's not anything like Judge Ito. He's not allowing any cameras. Why is it a Japanese judge each time for him? I don't know. Yeah. Oh. yeah. But he's not Pat allowing Marita. any cameras or any um, sketch artists, radios, anything. There's going to be nothing in that courtroom. Reporters will be sitting there, and they'll be allowed to, I suppose, take notes and cover the trial that way. Don't you know we're out of American judges? We have to get, get the important <laughs> Japanese ones. <laughs> judge Wu Flung Du. <laughs> <laughs> he has also uh, told O.J. Simpson's lawyers that they're not going to get to float... Uh, duty. No, be quiet. <laughs> float any um, rumors or right. speculation or innuendo about there possibly being a police conspiracy to frame O.J. They will either have to provide proof or they will not be allowed to bring that up to the jury. So what the hell does that mean? <laughs> different ball game completely. You only have to convince nine of the twelve jurors, and O.J. has to take the stand. This guy's like the opposite of Ito. Like he's going on bending over backwards to make the, the trial right. absolutely he no fun. No to everything. God. <laughs> <laughs> now it's no fun. Haven't we picked on O.J. enough? Yeah. Give him a rest. Wait, Isn't can, it can time? Can you stand it? We're not going to be able to see when O.J. takes the stand. It's killing me. I'd love to see it. I think we have a right to see it. I mean, we sat through everything else. Right. I think this is the better trial. 
Yeah. Yeah. This is more fun. OJ talk. And hot like chicks. Two more. Yeah, hot chicks. OJ, would you like to have another trial? I'd like to have two more. <laughs> two more. <laughs> because you won't be in court today because you'll be at the custody battle you're having with uh, the yeah. Don't Browns. Think it's That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's got uh, one case after another to uh, deal with here. So OJ made a move to have the trial only on rainy days so he wouldn't miss tea time. <laughs> it happens at the golf course. They're also saying that they're going to have another one of these huge jury pools because it'll be so difficult to find an impartial jury. Well, put they me on have there. To worry about people lying. This is going to be a good trial. Made up their minds. White people on this one. Hey now. This is the the white case. Yeah, this is the white people viewing the OJ evidence. <laughs> it's a whole different ball game, whole different set of eyes. White people will now get to judge OJ. Yeah, now OJ will get what's coming to him. Of course, he's already probably hidden all his money. Yeah, but yeah, if he does lose this case, it, he risks bankruptcy. In yeah. in a tree like a squirrel. <laughs> But, you know, it's not a black and white thing with the uh, O.J. thing. It was think all so? the glove. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I like when they say, well, the glove was the turning point. I was talking to my sister yeah. about it. My sister goes, I thought the glove fit. Yeah. I go, I exactly. did too. Everybody yeah. thought the glove fit except those 12 people. I know. Yeah. <laughs> There's no problem. Go ahead, Robin. John Hinckley Jr., uh, the man who shot John uh, uh, Ronald Reagan while he was in office, he is still in a Washington, D.C. area hospital. I'll let him out already. St. Elizabeth's, and he has commissioned his uh, jailers for at least one day a month. To do what? Where he can visit his parents unsupervised. Well, I got no problem with that. Oh, really? Yeah. Go ahead. Let him out. Let's see what happens. Let's see what he takes out this time. <laughs> yeah, he's all, he's all, uh, he's all right. So far, each of these requests has been denied. James Brady, one of the men who was shot by John Hinckley, said for his money he'd like to see him locked up for the rest of his life. I think there was reasonable doubt in that case. I don't think Hinckley was there. <laughs> Why did you say that? Are you bombing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You were doing so well. I turned my head for a second. I'm busy yeah. trying to close my yeah. computer. See, see the oh, my. you got to keep your eye on him. Nah. <laughs> he starts bombing. No. i got to keep my eye on you. Really? Yeah. Don't let him go by. So maybe Gilbert could carry the show for 20 yeah. seconds. <laughs> he saw you uh, not paying attention and he decided to just go. Right. It's like, it's like leaving a baby in a bathtub by itself. I know. You know? It's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Robin. I'm not laughing. That was so bad it made me forget what I was going to talk about. I know. I I, sometimes you make so much noise. <laughs> Larry Fortinsky, who is the ex of Elizabeth Taylor, yeah, right. he was arrested again. This what? time for possession of a weapon. This is his second arrest in about a two-week period of time. <laughs> I thought they arrested him for dating another pig. <laughs> well, he did have a woman on the back of the bike. He was stopped yeah. because he wasn't wearing a helmet. He was on a bike. Right. Motorcycle. Wasn't wearing a helmet. They stopped him, found that he was carrying a weapon, and so they arrested him and threw him in jail. Wow. She need a weapon for I guess, you know, because he's Mr. Elizabeth Taylor, he's right. he feels the need for protection. I... When he was asked who was his next of kin, he put Elizabeth Taylor really? on the... Uh, Cheat, yes. When the cop pulled him over, he he, he said, um, don't you know who I am? Oh, gee, can you believe that? Yeah. Are you kidding me? No, that's what it said in the paper. Oh, my don't you know who I am? Uh, I'm what? Mr. Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> You're Richard Burton? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he married her because he loved her, I'm sure. Who was the woman on the back of the bike, Shelley Winters? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was some blonde woman, but she didn't get arrested because she was wearing a helmet. Good for her. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Larry was arrested a couple of weeks ago on the suspicion that he uh, was taking drugs, but his toxicology test came back negative. You know what it is? He doesn't want to wear a helmet because he's got that long, flowing blonde mane. He wants that blown in the wind to attract women. Oh. And the woman that he was with wanted to wear a helmet so no one would see who she was. <laughs> <laughs> well, the woman's married, but they're supposed oh to be longtime friends. I see. Whatever that means. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Princess Stephanie has announced that she will indeed be Date fighting Gilbert Godfrey. for yes. <laughs> divorce from her husband. He was her bodyguard 
who she later married after having two children by. The marriage has lasted 14 months. The split came after an Italian tabloid ran dozens of X-rated pictures of Danielle Ducare cavorting in and out of a pool with a Belgian beauty queen. Mm. Mm. I know. That's one way to end the marriage. I know. <laughs> Well, some women go along with it. <laughs> yeah, but usually it's the woman who doesn't have any money, Howard. Right. Notice that uh, who's in the driver's seat in this one. Well, she must be a bad lay if he has to go uh, cheating. What are you talking about? Your wife's a bad lay? No, what's You're it You're talking about cheating. No, I wouldn't cheat, though. I talk about it. I just don't do it. <laughs> but uh, he went out and cheated, right? And they've only been married two years. She must be a bad lay. No, they've been together for quite some time. Oh, really? Yeah, they only got married two years ago. She'd already had the two kids by then. Mm. Ah, that's that's sad. So sad. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you hate to see a man. Yeah, I can't. I can't make a joke about that. Yeah, that's yeah, nothing just, funny. Go ahead. What else is in the ad? Too sad. How about laughing? In the uh, latest presidential polls, the margin between Bill Clinton and Bob Dole has narrowed to eight percentage points. Narrowed to eight percentage points. So I don't know why. These polls are very fascinating to me, how they fluctuate up and down. Last week it was 15 points yeah. between them. Now it's only eight. What happened? Nothing. I think people just want to, you know, make it interesting. Oh, so they're, they're pretending <laughs> they're going for? to vote for somebody else? Do you not give out political, uh, are you like afraid? Yeah, I, I just think it's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gilbert's voting for Nixon. Yeah. <laughs> No, you will not uh, disclose. Yeah, the... I'm voting for Dewey. Really? <laughs> you wouldn't be for uh, Clinton? I, I would think you're a Clinton man. I, I guess it would have to be. Yeah. There's, there's like no choice now. Right. Yeah. Although uh, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see what uh, Dole could do. You know that he virtually has no women voting for him right. practically. I mean, the polls are so low because they want this right to an abortion. And uh, Gilbert, have you ever gotten a girl pregnant? <laughs> God forbid that girl ever goes through with it. Gilbert would want to see the child, I think. <laughs> but you don't, you, the only thing that affects you, Gilbert, is money, right? So yes. Economy's pretty good. I don't, yes. can't see why you would uh, go against Clinton. Right. And if a girl gets pregnant, I could kill her. Right. <laughs> there you go. Well, uh, the big issue right now is the increase in teen drug use. So they've been going out and talking to teenagers. Here's one L.A. high school student to talk about all the pressure there is today for young people to take drugs. All right, let's listen to a student under pressure. There is so much pressure on people our age to do drugs. And you think that if you don't do drugs, I mean, you just can't be cool. That's true. That's true, you can. Gilbert's not cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. I'm going to start doing heroin. Here's uh, Rosalind Brannigan of the Drug Strategies Organization. You've never tried drugs, right? Uh, no, I used to. Did you? You yeah. smoked pot and everything? Pot, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. All right. Very hip. That's how you got yeah. this way? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so much for drugs making you hip. Right. Yeah, it's like Every new generation has to be educated about the dangers of drugs. If you don't, then the problem will come back over again. <laughs> so there, that's why we have this problem now. That voice makes me want to roll a joint. <laughs> <laughs> I got to smoke. <laughs> I know, I love people with voices like that. Yeah. Mom. Tupac Shakur was cremated yesterday. Very sad. And he died. still lived. No. <laughs> yeah, he's still alive. <laughs> Thank you, no matter what they do to him, he yeah. lives. He's coming out with an album next week. Right. It's amazing. They burnt him? Nope, he was cremated, and here are a couple of people who grew up with him to uh, talk about him. Here is Deborah Rogers. She grew up with two packs, Shakir? Yes. About two or three years ago, and he came to visit, and he walked in the library with his entourage, and he, and he said, he looked around, and he said, protect me, I've got to overdo library books. He was a funny kid. That's a good joke. <laughs> He's not a professional comedian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no reason to fear. <laughs> Tony Wilson says he had rather a, a tough upbringing. You sound like white people talking about I know. Well, I, I think she might have been a teacher. I, I was see. getting ready to do like a black imitation. <laughs> right. All right, this is Tony Wilson. As a young guy, he had a rough little life. Moms used to get high a little something. Mm, that's nice. Hot. 
his mom. <laughs> his mom's used to get high. A little something. <laughs> Like a black bean Martin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ah, now Jerry. Oh, a little something. Oh, go ahead, Rob. Hell's can't come true. Oh, a little something. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Tupac Shakur, he's, he's gone. gone. <laughs> he did a little something. Mm. <laughs> oh God. He's still trying to sell that. I guess. <laughs> he just goes on and on and right. on. It was uh, history being uh, made in baseball last night. Paul uh, Molitor? Paul Molitor. Is that the yes. guy's name? Yes. He's from the Minnesota Twins? I'm still on the Dean Martin show. <laughs> he, he's a designated hitter for the team, and he uh, entered that rare group of 3,000 hitters. Mm. He'll probably most assuredly make it into the... Baseball Hall of Fame. Here's what it sounded like uh -oh. with announcer Dick Bremer calling the shots of the game last night. <laughs> <laughs> to right center field. Myers and Nunley chase it. Myers, the ball drops. Molitor has his 3,000th hit and he's trapping for third. <laughs> Red playing sound effects, or is that real? <laughs> That's real. We've got more of the celebration. Play it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but what about you? You, you never... When you were a kid, you didn't play baseball. I don't picture no, you. No, no. You were like a Jew. Yeah. <laughs> like I wasn't like a Jew. I was, I was you, a Jew right now. You were the designated now. Jew. <laughs> Did you ever try to get well, the boys every, to play with you? Every party needs one. All right. Did you ever try to say to the boys, look, uh, can I play? And then what would they call you, a Jew? <laughs> Were you like, uh, did you ever have to stand there while they were picking teams God. and oh. not get picked or nobody wants to play well, with you? I, I was always like begging they wouldn't pick me. So right. I was like, what was like? In gym class? Yeah. Oh, the shirts work. and skins? Would you ever have to be skins? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been difficult for you to be skins, right? All right. Michael J. Fox is returning to television tonight with a new series for ABC. Gee, there's an event. <laughs> Here he is. They say, you know, they keep saying, you know, his career, his movie career just wasn't going very well, so he's back on television. Here's Michael J. Fox talking about this new show. It's a romantic comedy, uh, and it's also, you know, uh, it's yeah. a show about a bunch of young, hopefully young, attractive yeah, it's called uh, Friends. people yeah. talking about their lives and drinking coffee. Uh, like other shows that have been successful, uh, the difference is that these guys have to sit in the room when, when they're not drinking coffee. It's so, friends with jobs. Right. So it's not punch. Like he's putting it down. It's not a bunch of people sitting around drinking coffee. No, it is. Oh, it is. But the difference is that yeah. they run the biggest city in the world. Oh. Sounds real original. And is that on, is that must see TV or must avoid TV? <laughs> here's a clip. Michael J. Fox clip. Yeah. Let me hear this. What do you want to do? Oh, I don't know. Get rent a movie. Nah, I don't want to. You can read. No. <laughs> you can play boggle. That's it. I want to play boggle. <laughs> like you don't know. It's sort of like when Gilbert's on. You don't know what he's laughing at. Yeah. I'm not laughing. <laughs> hey, Mike. This is Paul. Listen, we're really getting beat up on this parade thing. We're rounding everybody up. On our way over, be there in three minutes. Can we do it? Well, I could. <laughs> So sex, in other words? Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and Pearl Jam has kicked off its tour. My, my prediction on that show, I say three episodes and he's back to bad movies. <laughs> 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 Here is, uh, I think, that, I guess some guy jumped up on stage last night and the uh, security cops were getting a little overzealous and getting the guy off stage. So here's uh, Eddie Vedder sort of commenting as he watches the uh, security guards do their job. Cops, what do you do? You know what they're saying, because we were just about to 
Music from the concert. All right, you big Pearl Jam fan? Oh yeah, yeah man. <laughs> yeah, brother. Pearl Jam song. Oh man, it's hard to pick. Gilbert, you can do this. Yeah. Sorry. Trying to get into it. Gilbert would be a really annoying guy to go to a concert with. Goofing on people. The Pearl Jam. <laughs> and finally, this morning, I told you uh, yesterday that I was uh, looking at Fortune magazine where they were talking about all those people who make money in the entertainment business, the most highest or the highest paid people. And um, Whores. Bruce Willis. <laughs> Oh. Made the list. He was in that top 40, which surprised me because I couldn't really think of anything he's done except those diehard movies. But he gets a lot of money because of that. One person who doesn't do sequels is Keanu Reeves. He turned down a ton of money to do another Speed movie. And here he is talking about uh, what that was like. What a dope. Or why he did it. I did one sequel in the past with the Bill and Ted um, Bogus Journey. Uh, but uh, good ones to do a sequel to. <laughs> I'm a little ambivalent about uh, sequels, and uh, and uh, you know we had done it, and uh, I just uh, I I didn't want to make my way that way. Huh? <laughs> well, uh, what, what was you got the a reaction Polish agent? of your yeah. advisors when you did that, Keanu? How do you think I'm out of my mind? <laughs> yeah, I had uh, many meetings. My hands started to peel. My stomach was churning. I'm like, oh no, people are uh, accusing me of career suicide and all that sort of thing. I told you not to be stupid, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. You would do a sequel, right? You could care less. Do it. Right. I, I what did are you what? About? I did Problem Child Three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you care? Yeah. Pay me. You have no career. Yeah. Uh, you have no. You, oh, my you don't, agents were right. You don't plot your <laughs> plan your career. Whoever offers you work, you take. Right. I, I thought the sequel was ambivalent. Uh, Did you ever I turn down anything? No. No. Yeah. Have you ever turned down anything? Yeah. I mean, unless it was. I mean, let's say it was just really bad money. But you yeah. even take USA Network. They hardly yeah. pay. Right. Artistically, are there some oh. things you want to? Do? Is there anything artistically you <laughs> want to? Do? I do USA up all night. Yeah. yeah. That what else? Your question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I admire you. Yes. <laughs> And Gilbert knows what he has to do, and that's it. You work. Would you dress as a woman? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Would you have sex with an animal? Sure. If it was the right money? <laughs> yeah. As long as they put a muzzle on them. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I admire you, man. Yeah. I don't want to get rabies. That's right. all I'm saying. By the way, um, Gilbert, next time you come in, could you dress as a woman? Okay. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried will oh, be... one other thing. Yes. Supermodel Christy Brinkley is tying the knot for the fourth time this weekend. That's your last for an She's hour? She's going to get married at her Bridgehampton home. Wow. The groom is 37-year-old Peter Cook, an architect and a former model. Oh. I hope oh. he checks huh. his bank book. <laughs> oh, oh. Right. I'm concerned about Christy. Well, you know, the last guy, she married him and then found out he didn't have as much money as he said he did. And she got upset and divorced him. Oh, she's oh. not shallow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did you hear what she said? She said, look, if a guy lies to you about what's in his bank account, he could be lying about other things. <laughs> <laughs> so she got out of there. Right. Anyway, uh, Robin, thank you. Uh, Gilbert, thank you. Gilbert will be at the Riviera Hotel this Saturday in Las Vegas with Bob Goldthwait. But you don't have to sit through Bob because Gilbert will probably go on first. <laughs> Two shows, 8 and 11. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, good. That's It'll good. ease your pain. And also, you're in the Aladdin cartoons. Uh, Aladdin and the King of Thieves. The new video, that yeah. uh, the movie that went straight to video with Robin Williams back yes. as the genie. And also your... Caroline's October 17th. Right. Well, looking forward to all those yes. days. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be there. Oh, there's certainly your fans like the Grateful Dead. They, they travel around and want to be... in a bus <laughs> going from town yeah, to town. Like, yeah, they sell things, fans. make T-shirts. <laughs> You never had a Gilbert Gottfried T-shirt, have you? <laughs> no. All right. Uh, Jackie Penthouse, Joe Page, Martling. Congratulations on your triumphant Sergeant Pecker. Seventy-eight wild minutes of nonstop filthy jokes. Only twelve dollars plus four dollars shipping and handling. CD or cassette. Buy two get one free. Call one eight hundred three two three King. Has Jackie ever given you one of those Gilberts so you can listen to it? 
I don't think so. No. I'll have to get one before I go home. He's the only person Jackie has never sent his package to. Gilbert's address is a very close guarded secret. (laughs) Friday and Saturday, November 1 and 2. uh, From you. (laughs) Jackie Jackie will be playing the Riviera Hotel on this trip in Las Vegas. With Goldwyn. (laughs) For information, visit Jokeland on the web at JackieJokeman.com. So don't think you're so high and mighty, Gilbert. Yeah. yeah. Jackie's yeah. playing there, too. And I'm doing USA up all night, so... Oh. All right. Yeah. All right, let me uh, take a break, and Fred will do the rest of the plugs, but uh, I've got to take this quick break.